I'm gonna do it again, uh, trying to explain it a little bit more. Once learned, this is a quite easy way to remember the cervical plexus and its connections. So first of all, we draw four loops that are coming out from the uh, first five cervical vertebrae. Then uh, we lengthen the first line downward and we draw a parallel line to this one. We will see why the color in one second. Uh, then we cross these two lines with one line upwards. And now we connect the last three loops into one single nerve coming out from the plexus. And this is basically the base of our cervical plexus. And now we can add the collateral branches. So we have two here. And I'm using the red pen because this is the anterior part of the plexus, so the motor part of the plexus. I can use the green pen for the posterior one, so the only sensory one. So we have one branch coming out from here, two from here, and one from here. Now before adding the labels, we can uh, underline the ansa cervicalis, that is this one. Okay. And now we can add the labels. Uh, this line is uh, black because uh, uh, it's not part of the plexus, uh, uh, represents our uh, hypoglossal nerve, so cranial nerve 12. Okay. And then from the ansa cervicalis, the blue one, we have uh, this communication with the hypoglossal nerve that is then uh, going to the genio entire hyoid muscles. And this, uh, from the ansa cervical, is direct to the infra eye hole muscles. Okay. Then we have the big nerve here, that is the phrenic nerve. And with the two small collateral, one, I just cross it, and uh, is uh, the communication, the X represents the communication with the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. And for the other one, I report RLC that would be recti longus captis so is the communication motor uh, branches to the two recti captis muscle anterior and lateral and for the longus captis muscle for the posterior branches instead we have uh, the first one is a uh, lo and ga so loga and there uh, is a uh, less, lesser occipital and greater auricular nerve then we have T R C that is transverse cervical, uh, cervical nerves and then we have uh, SCL that would be supraclavicular nerves mm, basically it's finished it's finished we can just add the name of the um, vertebral roots so we have one two three four and five and then, uh, to keep it easy, we are missing out some communication uh, with the spinal accessory nerve and the communication uh, uh, motor branches to the uh, longus uh, captis and uh, long, again and longus colli. We can just, I uh, think uh, an easy way is to cycle the second, the third and the fourth uh, uh, root and uh, then we can just write it our spinal accessory nerve is cranial nerve 11 and uh, longus, uh, two longus, longus captis and longus colli muscles. This is uh, basically it. The, we then have uh, some other branches to the levetoscapular muscle and uh, uh, other small communications, but uh, this is basically the, the main one. This is actually the diagram respectful of the topography of the cervical plexus. You can see in um, orange the loops coming up from the uh, first five cervical vertebrae, as we said, and the red color um, represents the uh, anterior part of the plexus, the, the green color the posterior sensory part of the plexus. Uh, the purple um, represents the communication with the cranial nerves and the cranial nerves and we can see the um, middle part of the plexus, uh, mid the middle vertebrae forming the plexus uh, C2, 3 and 4 uh, that have uh, also other collateral uh, connections.